Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light. How are we all doing Friday evening? How was your week? I hope you've been preparing if you're in the police recruitment process and you've not been letting time slip you by because there's, there's an announcement this evening where I'm going to share with you why it's so, so, so important now for you to really focus on making sure that you are absolutely ahead of your game. So just waiting for people to join me on this live. Uh, a couple of people just give me some likes straight away. Yes, uh, Luke is watching, uh, Rob is watching. Someone's giving me some little cry, cry, tear faces. What are those for? Um, Luke, Rob, David, is everything okay? <laughs> those of you watching. Um, I don't think I've said anything upsetting so far, have I? Have I said anything upsetting? Uh, Neil, good evening to you, um, coming to watch on this live. Um, Facebook's told me as well there's some new functionality where you can award me stars. I have no idea what that's about, but um, I've got a little thing on here that says stars. Can you can you do stars? Um, Aaron, Adela, Tanya, welcome, welcome. Someone try it out. What What's the stars thing all about? I'm not quite sure. It just, it's a new function. I always say yes to all the new functions with Facebook. You, you never know where they're going to leave us, lead us, or the metaverse, or whatever it is. Anyway, um, tonight I thought I would go through a few bits and bobs with you, some announcements. One of them is, is one that you may have heard of yesterday and thought, yeah, 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 loads of government hype. But really, we need to focus on this numbers thing. Um, there's going to be some changes to the uh, police recruitment process nationally. I've got a little bit of an inside track on that, so keep watching for that. Um, I'm going to introduce something next week, which I think you're going to love. I'm going to tell you more about that in a moment. You're going to love it, by the way. Absolutely love it. Uh, it's not going to cost you a penny, but you're going to love it. There you go. Um, and, oh, a shameless plug for my latest video. Um, but anyway, uh, and then following that... Uh, following all of that, I'd like to share with you some uh, tips around the sort of questions that you should be alluding to in your answers, interview answers. And this came from one of the Blue Light uh, group members who was asking about the difference between cathartic and catalytic questions. They've probably seen one of my worksheets, um, question bank worksheets, where I talk about uh, the sort of detail that you should be going into should actually look at things like the type of questions that you asked people and you can go deeper and describe the type of questions that you ask. So more about that in a moment. So um, let's start at the beginning. First big announcement. So a couple of days ago, the Home Office, uh, Priti Patel, Home Secretary, were all shouting from the rooftops how the um, police uplift that started about two years ago now uh, that had a baseline of March 2020, yeah, it was March 2020, that was right. March 2020 was the baseline. The 20,000 uplift was announced in August 19, I, I believe, if memory serves me correctly. Um, and the pledge was to recruit 20,000 additional police officers. Now, I'm not going to get into whether they're additional or not, because we all know that they're, they're not additional uh, since 2010. The police service has lost 21,000 police officers. So um, I think that the budget this week from Richie Sunak was actually looking at righting some wrongs. So the influx of money that's coming in for some departments to help boost their numbers, boost their performance, boost their capability, not just the police, it is actually just taking us back to where we were over a decade ago. So no big deal. Um, however, for those of you who are in the recruitment process, this is a big deal and you need to keep an eye on it because over the past couple of years, you may have noticed how a lot for a lot of forces that were quite competitive to get into, they're not quite so competitive anymore. And the reason for that is because they need huge numbers. Um, if we just do the math, about eight to 9,000 officers leave every year. So that's what they used to recruit. Every recruit in England and Wales that every sorry every year in England and Wales would recruit about eighty nine thousand officers, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, but it hover around eight to nine thousand officers, and that would account for the officers who are retiring, or who are just resigning mid career. So, after that, the government said, "Yeah, 
On top of that, I needed to ad recruit an additional 20,000. So that changes the game. So at the moment, the police service is recruiting about 15, 16,000 police officers every year in England and Wales. Now, they've succeeded in recruiting over 11,000 of those uplift officers, which means that there's another 9,000 to go. The benchmark target is March 2023, which might sound a long way off. So when we turn about talk about recruited, it means bums on seats. So you actually have to be in the constabulary. Whether you're attested or not, I don't think that matters. But as long as you are actually in the constabulary and you're being paid on March 2023, then you might count as part of that uplift, those uplift numbers. After that, nothing. We go back to exactly what we had before. And you might be thinking, well, that's, that's over a year away. Well, you know how long it takes to get recruited, don't you? And there's a lot of forces out there at the moment that are giving start dates, start dates which are in late 2022. So it's not going to be long before start dates in 2023 are start being dished out. Any start dates after March 2023 means that the position you're being offered will not be funded by the 20,000 uplift. So why is that so important now? Well, I think what's going to start happening is there's going to be a bit of a squeeze on recruitment as enforcers will start tapering down. Because if you're applying now, it's likely that you're going to end up being given a start date that is something like, something like, um, March 2023, January to March 2023, or maybe late 2022. That's presuming you get everything right first time. That's presuming you get through the application form, situational judgment tests that some forces have on their own, uh, the Apollo system that the Met uses, um, or you go into the College of Policing online assessment centre where you've got SJTs to do, competency-based interview, let's do two stage three, and then beyond that, every force has got their own weird and funky thing. So some forces have um, role plays, some of them have entry exercises, some of them have presentations, some of them have some bog standard interviews, some of them have interviews, but actually they ask you to, to answer all sorts of funky questions, situational, strength-based, values-based, a whole range of different post-assessment centre hoops to jump through. And then you've got the vetting, medical, uh, make sure your qualifications are right, there's so many hoops to jump through and they don't do it all in one go. It's all linear. So you've got to wait for each one of those things to actually finish before you can start the next one. Yeah, it's going to take your time. So I think what's going to start happening is forces, some forces are going to start winding down on recruitment now. And very soon we'll be down to recruiting for what we used to have, which is eight to nine thousand officers a year. Now, why is that going to impact on you so much? is because things get more competitive. Forces like Cheshire are already incredibly competitive. Um, I know that some of you are watching this at the moment who have actually succeeded in the Cheshire recruitment process, and I'll do some shout outs in a moment. You've succeeded um, in the process um, for Cheshire, but there's equally there's many of you who didn't, even though you passed everything. You pass the application form, you pass the online assessment centre, you pass their final interview, but you got an email to say that your mark marks combined weren't sufficiently high to secure yourself in the next intake, and that's the end of your application. They actually told a few of my clients, why don't you apply next week? We're opening up for recruitment again. How ridiculous is that? You've just been told you've passed everything. But they've already started setting the level which they're going to take people on at higher and higher and higher. The highest I ever saw was, I think it was about 83% in the search assessment centre about eight years ago, eight, nine years ago with Cambridgeshire Constabulary. Um, you, the pass mark was for 50, 50% was the pass mark for the search assessment centre. 83%. If you didn't get 83%, you didn't move on to the final interview. A lot of forces. Devon and Cornwall springs to mind, GMP springs to mind, um, Durham springs to mind, had uh, uh, Northum Northumbria, I think, did this as well. So the pass mark for search was 50, but for those forces, the pass mark for search was 60%. That's going to come in. 
quite sure of it. That's going to come in quite sure of it. So now it's time to start focusing, folks. This is what I keep telling my clients. Practice, 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 practice. You are not aiming for a pass. You are aiming for an awesome, awesome, awesome mark. So there you go, folks. That's a big announcement. Uh, and we need to keep an eye on that. Uh, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Just going to do some shout outs now. And then I'm going to tell you about a couple of other announcements. The big one is a change to the assessment process, which is on the horizon. A change to the assessment process, which is on the horizon. So let's see who we've got that we can do a shout out to. Uh, Adela, good evening. Adela, I'm actually going to, might seem a bit embarrassing, but I'm going to refer to a post, a comment that you made to a post in a moment, um, where we're going to look at the importance of the detail that's needed in your interview answers. So good evening to you, Adela. And uh, Tanya, uh, Rob, um, Rob's just said you can, yes. What was that? You can, yes. Is that that star thing? Does that star, someone let me know. If it's got stars enabled at the bottom, zero stars received. It's different to likes and loves. You don't have to pay for it, do you, or something? If you, if you have to pay for it, don't, I don't want any stars if you have to pay for it. Um, someone let me know. It's a new thing. Facebook's just told me about it five minutes ago. Metaverse. Uh, Neil is saying good evening. Good evening to you, Neil. Uh, Darren, Tom, Martin, uh, Ma Marks. Hey, oh, excuse, excuse me. Ma Marks, how was the ride along? Have you been on it yet? Uh, Becky, uh, Samantha, Samantha, I've, um, I've got your message. I will get round to it. I'll get round to it. Um, Dom, Jamie, Iona, Hugh, uh, uh, Ma, Ma Marks is saying good evening. Good evening to you. Sai Russ, how are you doing? Mitch is saying good evening, Brendan. Good evening to you, Mitch. Uh, Sai is saying, um, Evening, Brendan. Hope all is well. It's awesomely well. Uh, loving half term. Um, went out, picked pumpkins yesterday in north, just north of Yorkshire. Um, awesome pumpkin place, by the way. And the kids just loved it. Uh, I'm loving finally being in North Yorkshire. Please now. Oh my goodness. After all the multiple fails, couldn't have done it without you. Si, I'm so proud of you. Awesome. I expect to see passing out parade photographs. I expect an invite. <laughs> Hell, I expect an invite. Um, Hugh, I've got my start date for 4th of February. Grant, good evening to you, Armand, and well done to you, Hugh. Um, George is saying, would look, just like to thank you, Brendan. Without your guidance, I wouldn't be as close as I am to joining South Yorkshire Police. Hey, George, all I did was show you the way. You did the hard work. Um, Besides saying a high mark is essential for getting yourself ahead, indeed it is. So pleased that you're in, my friend. Radislaw, good evening to you. Andrea, God, loads, loads of you watching this evening, it's great. Uh, Chris, Natalie Palmer Sutton, good evening for you. Adela saying you have to pay for the stars. Thank you for the shout out, you're welcome. Uh, I, I, Facebook didn't tell me you had to pay for anything. It just said, hey, you've got the stars thing, people can give you stars. Um, don't pay for anything, don't pay for this unless you want to but why would why would you want to do that it's a facebook live um ma was saying amazing stay till 2 a.m fantastic it's market i know i know who you are i know who you are marketer don't worry um yeah so let's just see who else uh no don't be telling me i know who you are <laughs> sigh i know who you are as well <laughs> Don't be don't be explaining your secret names on Facebook. <laughs> You've given yourself a secret name and now you're all explaining what your secret names are all about. Um, <laughs> don't do it. Oh, by the way, once you join the police, don't think you can escape the gaze of those people who might want to um, look up your profile uh, when you don't want them to look up your profile just by spelling your name backwards. Most of the most of the crims out there. <laughs> They know that you spell your name backwards on Facebook. Um, si has got a good one. There is a good one. Uh, you do, do, do deserve to be proud of it. All right, okay. There's some shout outs out. Oh, so many of you watching. Great to have you on board. Um, right, change to the assessment process. I have heard from a, a very good source uh, rated B21 in old intelligence money. I know you've got some funky new system now, but I kind of think like B21. Actually, it's more A11, this is, more A11. Um, 
is going to be a pre-sift. Uh, the College of Policing wants to introduce a sift before the online assessment centre. So when I say sift before the online assessment centre, it's going to be another online something that's going to sift people out before the online assessment centre. Why are they doing that? I have no idea. They should be moving away from online stuff to stuff that's more values based where they're assessing your values. How many times do I have to repeat this? The online assessment systems are so formulaic. I've got the formula. I give you the formula. You apply the formula. You pass. It's awful. It's terrible for the police service. And what do they want to do? College of Policing, they want to introduce more online assessments. So you are going to be faced soon with another online assessment. It won't be called an online assessment centre. They're going to call it some kind of pre-online assessment SIFT. So that's on its way, folks. I'm not quite sure what it's going to be. I've got some ideas, but they are rated more E41. So I'm not going to talk, discuss anything that's rated E41. As soon as it becomes B21 or better, then I will let you know. And if you're thinking, what's he talking about? A11, B21, E41. It's old intelligence code. You should be able to look it up. Uh, it's called the 5x5x5 five by five by five system for rating intelligence. Uh, look it up. And it, actually, whilst you're all on, if someone finds it, post it in the comments. I'm sure others would love to see and read more about it. Uh, Dan saying, keep up the good work, Brendan, starting my third year of the PCDA with Northumbria. Less said about the university side, the better. I feel your pain, Dan. I feel your pain. I studied for university halfway through my career, went back to university to do a master's in education. Doing that and response inspector at the same time was hard, hard work. Um, so let's just see. Sai saying, couldn't agree more. Trust in the process. Still got congratulations for people for my 100% pass mark to this day. Absolutely no doubt in my mind that I couldn't have done it alone. Ah, well, again, Sai, all I did was show you the way you did the hard work. That's the important bit. So uh, what else can I share with you uh, before I give you some nuggets of learning? I should I might say, no. Um, excuse me. Uh, something else I'm going to do, introduce for next week is a weekly workshop. I've got one for clients, I've got one for my in-service cadre, my in-service officers, the, the serving police officers. We meet once a week and we prepare for promotion boards, that sort of thing. I've got one that I've just introduced for clients where we can practice for online assessment centre stuff, for interview technique. And I've uh, just gonna launch one. No one knows about this yet. You're the first to hear about it. Uh, let me know with some loves and likes and comments whether you think this is a good idea. Next week, a weekly workshop for the big Facebook group. If you're not part of the Facebook group, it's got over 17,000 members in it. Ask to join. Just uh, I'll put a link in the bottom and a link in the comments. Uh, but best thing, just look for it in Facebook groups. Just search for Blue Light and Police Recruitment and it'll bring it up. Ask to join. Tell me what force you want to join or tell me what force you're in. Persuade me that you're genuine. I'll let you in. And for that group, next week, I've not fixed the time yet, watch out in the group for an announcement for the time and the date. Weekly workshop, answering all of your police recruitment questions. It's going to be a Zoom workshop. So um, I think that's needed because so many of you are struggling with so many questions. I've got the answers and I thought I could just focus it all into one hour, a one hour workshop, completely free, uh, just for my awesome, awesome Facebook group members. Uh, so uh, I've got one like, that is that it? A weekly workshop, and all I get is one like. Come on, come on, is that, is that it? If I upset you because I introduced that stars thing, honestly, Facebook didn't tell me you had to pay for it. My, I apologize, I apologize. I'm not going to tick that, that star thing again. There we go, there's some likes and loves, that's it. I think it might be delayed a little bit. Um, I, I do these like announcements. Here's something cool I'm gonna do for you, and it's like crickets. Like the tumbleweeds rolling down the dirt road, and um, there we go. There's some loves and likes. Thank you. So um, that's that. Change to the assessment centre. Uh, before I tell you about more about cathartic versus catalytic questions, and we'll end on that. And this is something you really need to. You might be thinking, oh, it's too geeky for a Friday evening. Honestly, 
uh, and Adela will is proof of the pudding on this. It wasn't the only thing that helped her pass, but it certainly got her a high mark at her interview because she talked about specific questions that she asked and why she asked those questions in a uh, vulnerable person scenario. Uh, so another last thing to say before I do that is a shameless plug. I hope you've enjoyed watching my uh, first attempt at a vlogumentary. A couple of weeks ago, I got the opportunity to join the Metropolitan Police Violent Crime Task Force for a shift. It's absolutely awesome. I took my um, gimbal and my iPhone out with me and made a short vlogumentary. So if you've seen it and you love it, let me know. If you've seen it and you don't love it, let me know. Put something in the comments and let me know what you think about that vlogumentary. It was awesome being out with them, seeing what they do, seeing their professionalism, uh, really, really class officers. Uh, so great, great, great opportunity. I loved putting the video together. Um, my first documentary, vlogumentary. So let me know what you think and let me know if you'd like to see some more of those. I really enjoyed making it and I'd enjoy making more of them. So do please let me know. Uh, Tom, Audrey, Natasha, welcome to you, just joined. Um, now I'm going to talk to you about the importance of cathartic and catalytic questions. I know I'm going to see the numbers of people who are watching go down because you're going to go, oh, boring stuff. This is what gets you a pass, folks. This is the stuff that gets you a pass, so please, please stick around. This could make the difference. It made a difference to Adela. Um, Adela, you, you put something, someone asked about the difference between catalytic and cathartic questions and uh, Adela posted about how it enabled her to score highly in her interview by talking about the exact questions she asked someone who was vulnerable and why. So a lot of the time, um, uh, the reason why this is so important is because in some of the books out there, um, not this book, by the way, this is a shameless plug for my book, <laughs> buy this one, uh, How to Succeed in the Police Recruitment Process, even if you have no idea where to start with your preparation, shameless plug. But a lot of the other books out there give examples of answers that would be sufficient for interviews that just aren't sufficient at all. They're like a page a page of this long. It's just not detailed enough to meet the demands of the assessors. They want to they want to, to hear from you about the detail about how you did things. So just simply making a claim that I um, I talked to the person involved and managed to empathise with them and get them to move away from the edge of the bridge or whatever it might have been. Or I, I got them to feel better about themselves by asking uh, questions of them and saying, uh, don't worry, things will look up. Um, I empathise with them. I hear that all the time. I, am, I listened to them carefully and empathised. Um, how do you do that? You know, that's what I'm interested in as an interviewer. How did you do that? Jamie, by the way, welcome to you. Good evening. He's saying 92 pass mark in my interview. Listen to Brendan. You won't go wrong. Awesome. Thank you. Listen in, folks. This is important. So this is where we need to be able to recognise the type of questions we are asking people. And when we're asking people questions, we're doing it intentionally. And um, there was something called a five category intervention analysis that was developed by this chap called Heron where he looked at different types of questions and when you would ask those types of questions and he, he did it based on some research of really good counsellors. Um, Dave, not Dave Heron, Heron. It was definitely Heron and it's called Five Category Intervention Analysis. Um, actually, here we go. So we've got um, uh, Adela saying, on my interview, I should have been asked six questions, but I only got asked three as with my last example about the vulnerable man, I apparently covered the next three questions they were going to ask me. Your course got me through. I will always be grateful and always recommend your courses. Adela, that is awesome to hear. Can you believe that? I didn't know that, that you were meant to be asked six questions, six, six questions, and you only got asked three because your other answers were so awesome. That is incredible. That's what we're aiming for, folks. Adela, awesome. All I did was show you the way. You did the hard work. Adela listened to the sort of thing I'm going to talk about now. So 
if we're in a situation, let's use a vulnerable person. So if we're in a situation where we're dealing with someone who's vulnerable, someone who's upset about something, someone who's at a high level of emotional vulnerability, they're angry about something, they're upset about something, they're frustrated about something, and you're going to give an example about how you've supported someone who was in a difficult emotional state. So cathartic questions are questions where we ask about people's feelings. Catalytic questions are where we ask about information. So an example of a cathartic question would be, so how is this making you feel? An example of a catalytic question would be, what's causing you to feel like that? So one of them is asking for, for catharsis, for someone to re in the United States, wow. Um, so cathartic questions are about the feelings, uh, catalytic questions, the questions where you might explore those feelings. So, um, so let me give you an example. If someone was vulnerable, um, I wouldn't go in, by the way, straight away and start saying things like, um, so how are you feeling at the moment? I'd start building a rapport. I'd explain why I'm there, um, who I am, why, why, why do I want to speak to them, what the purpose of the conversation is. And I keep reiterating things like, you're going to be safe. You're going to be okay with me. Um, if I was a police officer, which I used to be, I'd say things like, I'm a police officer. You're okay with me. You're safe with me. Um, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to make sure that you're taken care of. I'm going to look after your welfare. You'd be safe with me. And I keep repeating things like that. You'd be safe with me. And then when it seems right, I'd say something like, it appears to me from the way you look and that you're in a really emotional state at the moment. I don't know what's happened. I'd like to try and understand what's happened so I can best help you. So I'm just wondering if you can um, please just tell me what, what, what's happened, what, what's got you into this position today. And you might say, uh, my wife's just left me, blah, 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 whatever it is. Okay, so how are you feeling now? How's this making you feel? That's your cathartic question. The one before was just designed to get information. What happened? Please, can you explain to me exactly what happened? Please, can you explain to me exactly what's happened? So you're Ted Pying your question there. Uh, Ted Pai, tell me, um, explain, describe precisely, in detail, um, exactly. Ted Pai. When you Ted Pai questions, you get them to be more specific. But start them off with a nice little warm up, things like I'm just wondering, um, I'm, I'm interested in, just as opposed to just going straight into the what happened. So they're catalytic questions. The cathartic question, once you've got that information about what's happened, now you want to ask the question, so how's that making you feel? How are you feeling at the moment? And you've got to be um, in tune with them as well. There's no point in just going, how are you feeling at the moment then? So how are you feeling at the moment? How are you feeling at the moment? How are you feeling now? When this person's just pissed off and upset. So if they were moving their head and saying, oh, just no one understands, I'd be nodding and going, I hear you. You, you, you feel at the moment that no one understands. And I'll be nodding their head and my head in the same way they are and using the same language and trying to use the same tonality back at them. Um, and then I'd go, so how's that making you feel? How are you feeling at the moment? And that's a cathartic question. And then they'd say something like, so, oh God, you can't believe it, I'm so pissed off. I've never been so pissed off. I've never been so low pissed off and low. God, they're powerful words. Powerful words. I want to see if I can help you. Um, and that might need you to open up a little bit. So what, what do you feel the cause of the, that emotion is? What do you feel is causing it? So it's still a cathartic question because I'm asking about feelings. I'm asking about feelings. What do you, what do you feel is causing that? Because the time's not right to start asking catalytic questions just yet. 
Once I've stabilised a little bit and are sounding a bit more coherent because I've, I've, I've allowed that catharsis to come out, those feelings to come out, now I can start asking catalytic questions like, I'll change the feel word, the F word, to the T or B word. So I'm interested in, um, and you might find this interesting as well, I'd say to them, you might find this interesting. I'm just wondering what you think the cause of whatever it is, is whatever's happened. What do you think caused it? So you see, I'm changing the questions now. So I'm changing them now from feelings type questions to deliberately asking questions about um, what they think caused something to happen. And there's a whole range of questions that could be asked. What do you think the impact might be on other people? What would have happened if? Um, if someone else had been involved and they were watching, what would they have thought? There's all sorts of questions you can ask. And they're a way of getting people to open up. But if you're doing it deliberately as part of a debrief model, then you are going to get really good results. That's the bottom line. You're going to get good results. Now, these are the sort of things you can actually try out in real life. Um, and don't worry if it doesn't go great to start with. I'm not talking about helping people down off a bridge who's about to jump off. I'm talking about just people might be upset about something. And you can use this sort of debrief model to really, really help them. And more than that, it'll really, really help you on your interview. So you can talk about not just that you asked open questions such as, but you can talk about why you ask certain questions, why you ask cathartic questions, why you ask catalytic questions, how you intentionally did these things. And it'll stand you in super good stead. I mean, honestly, it really will. You'll have interviewers thinking, this is awesome. This is brilliant. Because most candidates just come out with, I listen to the person empathetically. And you're going to talk about how you got the other person to talk and then how you listen to them by maybe things like reflecting back phrases that they use. That's empathy. You're demonstrating your ability to see things through the lens of another person. So it's making sense, folks. I hope it is. I mean, it's like a... I could talk for hours about this kind of stuff because it's fascinating. It's always fascinated me, but it's really powerful. Throughout my career, I've used the, the, the it's like a superpower of being able to ask the right questions at the right time with the right tonality in the right way. And I've not always got it right and I still don't get it right. It's taken years to build this up. Um, but uh, I'm just looking at the time now thinking I'm gonna have to sort of cut off in a moment. But what I think I'll do for my clients, so. I think I'll probably put together a little video to help explain this in more detail. Uh, we'll look at a debrief model that you can utilise, that you can start uh, thinking about utilising and then start talking about in your interview. Uh, what else can we do? Um, maybe something around motivational interviewing. This is a really good way of getting people to progress forwards uh, with their own ideas about how they can improve their own situation. Motivational interviewing is just an awesome, awesome, awesome way of um, managing a conversation to help someone move forward so that you're not giving them the ideas for their future. Um, they are creating their own ideas for their own future. It's a very, very empowering process. Um, and uh, my favorite, 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 uh, which is the Atticus Finch. The Atticus Finch. Uh, Atticus Finch was a character in a film called uh, To Kill a Mockingbird and a book called To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, and in it, he talked about, you can only really truly understand what someone's going through if you get inside, I think the phrase was get inside their skin and, and see, see the world through their eyes. I don't like that getting inside their skin bit ever since uh, the film Silence of the Lambs. It's just freaked me out a little bit, but... If you can walk in someone else's shoes, if you can see the world through someone else's lens, then you can really truly understand them and their needs. And that's so important. It's part of the emotional awareness, competency, it's part of the public service value, it's part of the impartiality value. It, it, it touches on so many of the CVF competencies and values. Um, but don't worry about those, just worry about answering the question really, really well. Um, the Atticus Finch is just a 
beautiful, beautiful set of phrases that you can use. Uh, and I've, I've, I've nailed, I've, 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 I've taken a bunch of angry people as a neighbourhood inspector and got them into a point where they are silent. Silent. Actually, I'm going to share it with you now. Shall I share it with you? Let me know. Uh, let me know. Shall I share the Atticus Finch with you? Um, Adele is saying, it does make sense. And like you said, it is fascinating. I've worked with vulnerable people for years and this approach does work. It does, doesn't it? And it worked for your interview, Adela. That's the main thing. Uh, because you scored awesomely. And I can't believe that. They actually stopped. They actually stopped at uh, question three and said, we don't need to ask any more questions. That is just wonderful. I, I'm so pleased for you. You must have felt so good at the end of that interview because that's when you know you've passed. You know, they'll say to you, well, we'll email you in a week and let you know what the result is. You know you've passed when they say, we don't need to ask you any more questions. That's just amazing. I love it. I love it. So Adele is saying, yes, yeah, the Atticus Finch. Does anyone else want to hear about the Atticus Finch? Come on, give me some loves and likes if you want to hear about the Atticus Finch. It is an awesome, awesome way of managing um, conflict in a community. If you've got a community setting, uh, you could use this for your stage three of the online assessment centre when you talk about um, when you talk about your stage three briefing, talking about how you're going to manage angry members of the community. Um, the Atticus Finch just nails it. Um, and Adele is just saying uh, that is exactly what happened. We we're already one hour and 15 minutes into the interview. As gutted as I still wanted to talk, I had so much to say. You've got so much to offer, Adela. So much to offer. So don't worry about that. You're in. Your start date is what? It's just in a week or two, isn't it? Um, anyway, so let's just take a look. Nat uh, by the way, welcome, Natalie. Welcome, Daniel. And welcome, Steve. Just about to wrap up now. Um, we've just been talking about questions. Uh, the importance of good questions. Uh, 15th of November, Adela is saying, hey, I expect an invite to the passing out parade. Um, I don't, I don't expect it. I'd love it, but I'd love, to, actually, I'd love to come to more of your passing out parades. Um, it'd be really awesome to, to get an invite now that COVID started to go. Is it going? Anyway, whatever. Um, the Atticus Finch. So this is a really good way of getting people to empathize with others. So if we look at the stage three of the online assessment center, uh, and then part of that, you're going to be dealing with angry members of the community uh, for the briefing, angry members of the community who might be up in arms about drug dealing, drug taking, homeless people. Um, the way I would do, I mean, actually, I've done this, by the way, with, with a, a community group, a group in the community who are up in arms about homeless people in uh, Sale and Trafford. And they wanted them as Boeing out of town. They wanted them injuncting out of town so that they it would make it a criminal offence for them to be there. And I can remember standing up and saying, do you know, the people you're talking about are someone's mother or someone's father. They're someone's brother or sister. They are someone's son or daughter. And they're not all bad people. Actually, none of them are bad people. Um, I'm not going to allude to individual circumstances, but I know that a lot of them come from very, very troubled backgrounds. Some of them had families that weren't supportive. Some of them had no families. For some of them, their nearest role models, they weren't around their own kitchen table. They, they didn't live on the same street as them. These were people who suffered as children and they're suffering as adults. And they may have committed crime. They may have been in and out of prison. But now they're homeless. Now they have nowhere to live. They don't have a roof over their heads. And they struggle from day to day. Do they take drugs? Yeah, they do. Do they drink lots of alcohol? Yeah. Actually, if I was in their situation, I think I'd probably do the same. I think I'll probably do the same. So, I'm just wondering if you can imagine what it might feel like 
Actually, I'd like you to imagine this for a moment, what it might feel like to be homeless. Imagine for a moment, if you can, being in their shoes. Where people walk past you and spit at you. They urinate on you whilst you're asleep. You're scared to go to sleep because of what might happen. They burn your tent down. They shout at you, swear at you. And all your fellow humans want is for you to leave the only place you've got to live. How would you feel if you were in their shoes? And I'll just leave it with silence. And that's it, that's the Atticus Finch. Um, and I've used a lot of different techniques there. Uh, I'm just wondering, I'd like you to imagine if you can. Uh, these are all sort of Darren Brown um, neuro-linguistic programming tricks. I'm just wondering, I'm not, but whenever you mention wonder, people like wonder, don't they? I'd like you to imagine, I'd like you to imagine if you can. I've just told them, imagine you can. I'd like you to. Well, people will. If I tell them to imagine, you must imagine now. They won't do that. So all sorts of little tricks like that. They're not tricks, actually. They're just good communication skills. Um, but I can remember the, that community meeting just being silent, absolutely silent. And then I said, um, I gave them a few minutes to just think about it. And then I said, do, do you still want the mass bowing out of town? Or should we do something more meaningful that's going to help our fellow human beings to enable them to once again become the best version of themselves they can be or actually for some of them they may not have ever been that best version what do you think what should we do should we ask Burma out of town or shall we work to help support our fellow humans not one person wanted him as Burma out of town and it was all down to the Atticus Finch technique so I've used that at an interview and I completely nailed that interview talking about how I managed a difficult situation with a community group. Um, and the interviewers were absolutely fascinated when I started talking about how I intentionally said things like, I'd like you to imagine if you can. Um, I'm just wondering, um, how would you feel if you, uh, all of it, all of it intentional, all of it intentional. And, um, I can, they, they were absolutely fascinated, completely nailed the interview, completely nailed it. So there you go, folks. That's the Atticus Finch um, in the client only group for, I'll do a little video for you. I'll explain a debrief model where you can use different questions and how you can use them. And also about motivational interviewing. You might be able to look back on things that you've done in the past and think, ah, right. So actually what I was doing there was, and then you can talk about it in an interview, or it might give you the, uh, it might give you the sort of um, uh, incentive, the, 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 the kick to go and actually try out some of these things. You don't think the first time I stood in front of a member of a community and started talking about um, vulnerable people and such like that it all worked, for, all worked perfectly first time. I've done some community meetings as neighbourhood inspector that were absolute train wrecks. Um, but you learn by having a go. You learn by taking action and trying something new. And um, that, that, that moment when I used the Atticus Finch model uh, with that community group, just, just, I walked out of it just thinking, today I did a good thing. Today I did a good thing. Because now we're gonna really help those people. Um, I'll tell you, actually, we, there was so, look, let me just share something with you. This is what awesome police officers look like. And I'm gonna go in a minute after that. So there's Heather Clarkson, awesome police officer from several years ago. Uh, there she is with Gary. Gary was one of those homeless individuals who everyone wanted as Boeing. The best you could get out of Gary was lots of expletives uh, when he was being arrested for stuff. And there he is almost one year later with Heather Clarkson, um, almost off the drugs, almost off the booze, and his life getting better. He looked better, he's smiling standing next to a police officer for a photograph of the Manchester Evening News. That's what I call awesome. 
anyway, to all of the police officers out there who are doing those awesome things, like Heather, who are being awesome, kudos to you. I love you, love you so much for what you do. You're absolutely amazing. Um, you may not get thanks enough for what you do, but I thank you from my heart for what you're doing to keep us all safe. So keep up the good work, folks, if you are in the police now. For those of you who are looking to join the police or have got start dates, kudos to you, I doth my cap to you. You're about to join the best job in the world, the world. So, folks, I'll leave you with that. Um, Facebook Live next time, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to cover. I'll think of something. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this one this evening. And uh, if you're watching this on the recording, it might be first thing in the morning for you, so you might be a bit confused. But um, I'll create a recording of this, so, you, so if you've just missed it or you missed the beginning bit, you can always come back to it. Thank you all for watching. Um, Gary, I'm sorry you've just come to start watching. Uh, we're just about to go. Same with LB, Jamie and Jane. Uh, but I hope you do watch the recording of it. hope you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments um, if you'd like me to Facebook Live about anything else. And I shall catch up with you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye for now.